Hello and welcome to Solutions. This is the sixth episode of our second series of podcasts for solution-focused hypnotherapists. I'm Cathy Eland. And I'm Trevor Edwards, and we're both experienced solution-focused hypnotherapists. Today we're looking at the anterior cingulate. You always like all these details, so here goes. The cingulate cortex can be found in the middle of the brain. It wraps around the head of the corpus callosum, which, as you know, connects the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Part of the cingulate cortex at the front is called the anterior cingulate cortex, or ACC. Not surprisingly, the part at the back is called the posterior cingulate cortex, PCC. The ACC is also called the anterior cingulate gyrus. Yeah, it's just a shame we didn't have a picture to look at. But I have an interesting fact for you. The ACC contains spindle neurons, which are only found in the anterior cingulate and the frontoinsular cortex of humans and great apes. So tell us, what does the anterior cingulate do, Trevor? Because it connects to other brain regions, it has a variety of functions. It's involved in certain higher level functions, such as attention, allocation, reward anticipation, decision making, ethics and morality, impulse control, e.g. performance monitoring and error detection, and mood regulation. It also regulates blood pressure, your heart rate and endocrine responses. Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose we're probably more familiar with the ACC as being the secretary of the brain. Uh, John Ratey, in his book, A, Ge- A User's Guide to the Brain, pictured the brain as having three main functional areas. He thought of the prefrontal cortex as the CEO or the boss, the anterior cingulate, because it's between the intellectual brain and the primitive emotional brain, as the secretary or PA, the amygdala as metaphorically a fire and safety officer. If there's a situation, the secretary will take control and follow predetermined procedures. The boss will probably go along with this, although it does have the ability to take back overall command, although this can be difficult. But most of the time, the brain can run on automatic and the secretary runs things because she knows what she's done previously in similar situations. So when messages arrive from the senses, most go to the thalamus and then to the amygdala, where they are pattern matched. If the message could be considered an immediate threat to survival, the amygdala will signal to the hypothalamus to respond immediately, i.e. the fight or flight response. Otherwise, the message is then sent to the secretary using dopamine, suggesting what type of message it is, sadness, joy, disgust, etc. The secretary will check against the library of previous events, the hippocampus, to see what's best to do. Now, it may be that the library shows the requested behaviour is good, and if you could see me, I'm miming air quotes at this point, and the secretary will add its own dopamine to the message and pass it on to the boss, who will then authorise the appropriate action. Yeah, and probably uh, you use this metaphor when working with smokers and vapours and perhaps other addicts. A smoker's hypothalamus signals to the amygdala that nicotine levels are low. The amygdala sends a signal to the anterior cingulate to have a cigarette. The anterior cingulate checks for relevant past memories to evaluate how important that signal is. There are usually positive, it's called euphoric recall. The secretary finds rose-tinted memories that recall smoking as being cool or, or whatever. It never seems to find memories of standing outside in the cold and wet. And so the anterior cingulate adds its own dopamine to the message. Because of all the dopamine, the boss has little choice about what to do and it goes ahead and sends a message to have a cigarette. Yeah, dopamine motivates behaviour to bring about something that is expected. Smokers expect to experience satisfaction, but it's temporary. Joe Griffin, who with Ivan Tyrrell are the human givens people, says that more often than not, all people get when they have a cigarette is a brief assuaging of the discomfort caused by expecting to smoke rather than any pleasure from smoking. 
So for smokers, every time an urge for a cigarette arises, they should remind themselves that one won't be enough. Soon, instead of expectation of pleasure, the anterior cingulate will deny the request and the desire will no longer reach their consciousness. Soon, the hypothalamus will get used to the new low nicotine levels and won't signal the amygdala. The boss has to be quite firm that being a non-smoker is a priority for the secretary not to carry out that library search and refuse the request. It's also been found from functional MRI studies that the ACC registers physical pain. It seems to be involved in the emotional reaction to pain rather than the perception of pain itself. In addition, the ACC may also be involved in monitoring painful social situations, such as exclusion or rejection. So the ACC may be involved in the detection and monitoring of social situations, which may cause social or emotional pain rather than just physical pain. Interesting. Uh, Mindfulness training can affect the ACC. After mindfulness training, people have higher ACC activity and show higher performance in tests of self-regulation and resisting distractors. People become more resilient. And when talking about the gut-brain axis, the GBA, it's interesting to note that signals from the gut go to different parts of the brain, including the insula, the limbic system, including the amygdala and hippocampus the prefrontal cortex and the ACC. Yeah, and because the ACC connects to limbic structures such as the amygdala and the hypothalamus, it's involved in several emotional functions such as assigning emotions to certain stimuli, connecting facial expressions to the correct emotion, making vocalizations express certain emotions such as laughing when you're happy, etc. Okay, but damage to the ACC can lead to an inability to express feelings, a lack of empathy, loss of regulations of the autonomic nervous system, including heart rate, respiratory rate and blood pressure. People also become poor at decision making because they are unable to detect errors and monitor negative responses. It is also thought that the ACC detects and monitors errors, evaluates the degree of the error and then suggests an appropriate form of action to be implemented by the motor system. So, just to round things up, the anterior cingulate has a number of important roles in the brain, and damage to it can be quite debilitating. We might well conclude that there's more to it than simply being the brain's secretary. Yeah. Well, that's about it from us. Next time, we'll be taking another look at working without scripts or at least confidently adding bits to existing scripts to tailor it more to the client you're working with. And until then, it's goodbye from me, Cathy Eland. And it's goodbye from me, Trevor Eddles. See you next time. Bye. Bye.